Firstly, I'd like to thank Vesna and her team for giving us this opportunity to share our ideas with you, with you all here today and to enable this powerful bridge between the UK education system and Montenegro and the Balkans in this crucial year of tipping points for our societies and for our humanity, as well as for our biodiversity and ecosystems. Julie, would you like to start? And then Stephen, if you'd like to follow. Well, uh, my name is Julie Ward and um, I was a member of the European Parliament from 2014 to January 31st, 2020. And I came into politics um, from the world of arts and culture and education. Um, and during my mandate, I co-founded a children's rights intergroup in the European Parliament because children um, are really not listened to. They're largely ignored uh, because they don't have a vote. And lots of politicians have not yet realized that children are the voters of the future and that we have to engage with children and um, not just listen, but really act on their um, recommendations uh, and involve them in policy making. Uh, and that probably means doing things very, very differently. Uh, my name's Stephen Whitehead and I run um, a not-for-profit called Countershade, which is specifically designed to use, um, to use art as a process to develop empathy with nature so that people can develop their own best practice and share with other people a more sustainable lifestyle. Fantastic. I hope everybody got a real feel for, um, for what the great imagining um, is as a, as, a, as, a, as a project, as a concept, as a programme. I mean, I've, I've started to describe the great imagining as a, as a very concentrated way to s approach several different agendas at once. Um, the first being a, a kind of form of citizens assembly in every school shared through a fabulous immersive public exhibition um, to put the schools at the heart of transformation in their communities, a kind of Rob Hopkins transition networks model. I don't know if anyone's aware of Rob Hopkins' work, but um, to prevent a practice, to, to bring a practice-based teaching of creativity to UK schools, um, where currently innovation, collaboration, imagination, critical thinking, and creativity are being pretty much squeezed out of the curriculum. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of how the curriculum works in, in the Balkans, um, so I'm only coming from a UK perspective there. Um, and then finally to, to give students a chance to explore what they love and, and are really good at in a safe environment where they can experiment and make mistakes. Um, this is very much around the, the, the late Ken Robin, Robinson's um, kind of provocations and, and um, you know, work within, within creativity and education. Um, particularly his talk about being in your element, I think is a really powerful way of thinking about how 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 um, we can inspire young people with the kind of awe and excitement about the future, given the fact that, that everything is so uncertain and and in such um, flux and change. Um, this is a question for both of you. What do you think the real power for you have, is of this kind of work? I think we've got to break down lots of um, borders and boundaries um, between uh, not just people, but between subject areas. And um, one of the things that I did in the European Parliament was to um, in, uh, introduce the idea of STEAM, not STEM. So, you know, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and maths, and is often given precedence over arts and humanities. But if you put the A in there and call it STEAM, you're actually including arts and humanities and you've got a much uh, a much broader um, more well-rounded um, idea about the different um, subjects that should be uh, studied and for me excluding arts from stem has always been very strange because scientists and i would include natural scientists in this scientists have to think creatively in order to innovate and invent and artists are working with science. So for example, dancers are counting, so are musicians, um, architects are working with, with um, uh, space um, uh, and visual artists are often working with chemistry and, and physics. So um, I, I really, I think what's really important is to have this more kind of holistic approach to education 
um, in the first place. And that has to, uh, I think that teachers and educators, not just teachers, but that whole school environment has to be on board with um, a much freer way of exploring both the media environment and the sort of macro environment in which we live, the earth. Um, so, and, and I can see how this plan would really free up people to explore, you know, beyond those narrow boundaries that, that uh, 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 um, I believe are, are imposed upon um, students and the academic community. Uh, and they don't help because then people are very, very stuck within their different, um, uh, they're, they're stuck within their spaces and within their academic subjects. And, uh, and, and, and everything becomes very competitive. And actually what we've got to do is stop being competitive and finding ways to work together. So this for me would be like the main, uh, the main benefit of, of what you're proposing is that it, it, it would just free up all that, all that time, all that space. And I, I mean, time in one's head as much as time in the classroom and the school. Mm. I think that the, the, the thing with the um, culture being kind of everything about how we live, um, not just the arts is such a, an important distinction, um, as well as kind of how we reflect the diversity of our various kinds of intelligences and, and abilities and, racial backgrounds and all of the different kinds of ways that, 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 that a classroom is made up of the, all this talent that's most of which is for me underused. Um, Stephen. I think this is, this is part of the great revolution that's happening within our minds is reality has always been there for us to discover but we've stopped ourselves. Finally we're understanding the interconnectedness of everything and when you realize that when you realize there is a wood wide web, when you realize that you need to feed your internal biome as well as just throw calories into your body for you, then you start to understand everything differently. You, and you, you re, this, it goes back again to this word culture, culture, culture all the time is we are cultural agents, but that's not just because we're in theatre or the arts. It's because we're actively involved. And a lot of what we do doesn't just grow us. It's not a benefit to us directly as an individual. We're growing a culture that we live in. And I think it's that collaboration and it's understanding how that collaboration will be of benefit to you and to everyone else is a really revolutionary thought. So for both of you, um, because I know Stephen that you've also had a lot of kind of uh, involvement in, in, in Europe and the cultural um, mm -hmm. activities of Europe. How do you see the role of education in building bridges in our struggling economies? Um, pandemic related um, and national relationships now that UK is leaving Europe? Well, well <laughs> come on, Julie, you've got to take this one first, please. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a very difficult situation because um, our young people um, who are the citizens of the future, the voters of the future, the leaders of the future, the business leaders of the future, um, our young people, they were born into um, a Europe uh, and not necessarily um, in understanding, you know, the complex, rather techn uh, technocratic um, aspects of being in the EU, but certainly feeling European. And um, I think that um, what the government is doing um, is, a, is, you know, is a is a nod to the past and it isn't engaging with the future. Uh, and so um, culture and cultural links, intercultural dialogue, in, which in fact was my biggest uh, piece of work in the European Parliament was a report on intercultural dialogue for diversity, education and fundamental values. Um, this is going to be absolutely crucial to how uh, the next generation rebuild and strengthen links with neighbours because we cannot um, be adrift as an island in the world right now when so much requires 
us to collaborate and solve problems collectively. We had a, um, a wonderful example when uh, we did the Green Culture Exchange last year and we had the, uh, the group of young people come over from Montenegro um, and visit a, a secondary school in London. Um, it didn't take introductions, it didn't take having to set something really fancy up, you just empty a classroom, throw a pile of English kids in and a pile of Montenegrin kids in and they immediately are, are talking to one another and they're finding cultural links, they're finding much more in common than they're finding different to one another. The difference is lovely, the difference is why you travel, um, but also there's something really special about people seeing the link immediately, just finding things in common and sharing them together. And I think also because we then, because the thing was whole, the, the entire um, meeting was framed around sharing ideas around what could happen in the future around sustainability and their relationship to nature again they were able to build something together um, you know that th there is so much healing to do in the world right now in uh, you know as much as building so i think that the the those kind of com conversations between between young people who are, are still in their curious space and still wanting to kind of find out is is invaluable um at this at this at this particular time um julie i've got a bit of a question for you um what value did you and i think maybe you might have answered this so so we could we could, but maybe there's something else to say what value did your experience as an artist and cultural producer bring to your work as an mep um i i'm a communicator and i communicate on a very human level and um i learned the importance of stories um both real stories testimony but also um stories of metaphor and symbol and um so whenever i was speaking in the debates in the committees and in the plenary i was always very concrete about what i said i always referred to real people real places real projects um, and I felt that that communicated something that uh, was um, of much more um, immediate impact than talking about um, te uh, technical uh, legislative issues. I mean, um, you know, I had to engage with all that stuff. And, and in fact, I've been a journalist and a writer and an editor as well. So um, I'm very, uh, I'm very assiduous about language, but I think in terms of communication, um, we've got to appeal to that very kind of the this sort of human life cycle. You know what what it means to be young, to be a child, to you know be an adolescent, to uh, be somebody who's leaving school, to be a um, somebody looking for work, to be a, a young parent. You know to then be somebody um, you know who's facing uncertainty and work to to be somebody on the verge of retiring to be a grandparent it's those those things and and they've 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 been the things that we've always cared about in terms of stories and that goes right across all cultures you know I think there's um, only seven stories in the world and those seven stories are told again and again and again um, by different cultures and they've been used by famous filmmakers and they work and there's a reason why they work. They work because they appeal to the human heart and the human soul. And I, as, as somebody who, I mean, worked in theatre, but was, I was also a storyteller. So, you know, and I've uh, been researching stories and, I think I, I'm in love with that myself. So I could still be in love with my role as a politician, provided it gave me a platform to communicate on that human level. Stephen, in your experience working with students in UK schools, and then in your exchange program with Green Culture Diplomats, I mean, you kind of answered this one as well. Um, how do you see the state of play in education in the UK and beyond? Um, 
education in the UK for me has become increasingly frustrating because um, when I first changed my practice and started uh, doing relational work, um, work with, with communities or with, with school groups, um, we were supported by the Arts Council um, and there was a completely different feel to the way in which artists could actually be useful and they could, they could teach across the curriculum um, and they could encourage creativity. And then we had the crash, we had a change of government and um, basically the gainsaying of a lot of work which had been based on, you know, scientific results. This, this shouldn't have been ideological. Um, you know, creativity is, is the thing that we need to encourage in schools, not the learning of stuff, which by the time you leave school will be out of date and therefore you'll never get the job that you want because it's been uninvented now and there's a whole new range of jobs. So, you know, even on a, on a really sort of um, very pragmatic level, if you consider education is just about getting a job, which I don't think it is, but a lot of people, that's the argument that's put forward, then it still, it still just doesn't work, Liz. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that with the great imagining that it's, it's so exciting and it's so big that it just bulldozes a lot of the silly opposition out of the way. And we just say, look, just do it. Do it for two weeks and then we'll, we'll show you what you actually get out of it because we don't have um, a fixed ideology we don't have an agenda over and above helping people so for goodness sakes you know how dangerous can that be you're yeah. going you make the decisions along along the way as you do this thing we're not imposing a fixed idea on you so gavin williamson minister of education if you're out there this is a great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh yeah, and, and just to give a bit more of our sort of, of the, of the, of the lovely flavour of, and, and the de deliciousness of this, of this practice, um, can you describe some of your work and give us some examples of powerful transformations that you've witnessed in young people as a result of this kind of work? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working um, with young people like for decades and I'm still in touch with uh, young people that I work with when they were, you know, um, in... Uh, infant school and primary school and I was at a meeting recently of um, uh, counsellors and um, one of them sent me a message on the zoom chat and it said I'm reading it now I can absolutely endorse the validity and power of theatre in schools it must be not far off 30 years ago when you did a piece of work over a term at the school I worked in then near Thursk. The work you did really helped focus and also turn around a lot of the lads there. One in particular I found a letter from just the other day. He was at Leeds University doing a chemistry degree. I honestly think that the work your team was involved with the boys was significant. All right and if you if you spend time with people who's, who've worked in uh, in participatory arts, in education or in youth, you know, in the uh, criminal justice system, and you've made relationships in your own communities with those young people, um, they think of the arts organisation almost as family, and they keep coming back, and they, and they give the evidence about the transformations, and they are profound, they are lifelong, and just to put it in the context of um, uh, exchanges and mobility between young people from different countries, uh, I was, my organisation, so I used to run a, an artist's co-op and we regularly took young people from marginalised communities, uh, from the coalfield communities of Durham, which is where I am now, uh, to meet with their peers from all around Europe uh, in a wonderful um, uh, environment in the Harz Mountains in Germany, using arts and culture for two weeks to explore what it, uh, sort of common identity issues around being European, uh, issues um, about the environment, um, about peace, all those kinds of things. 
And those young people were not um, privileged young people. They were the young people who were having problems, who were excluded, you know, who were getting into trouble for various reasons, you know, who probably weren't, weren't going to go to university. And I saw the transformation of those young people. When they returned from that two-week engagement, they, um, they, stopped, uh, they, they stopped missing school. Uh, they started volunteering in their communities. They joined local uh, youth councils. They uh, became, some of them actually went to um, university, some went to college, some became leaders in the very organization that had supported them uh, and which they'd engaged with. And I still know them. And they, they're, the point of the transformation was, um, yes, they were engaging back in their own communities with the arts. But the really transformative experiences came with those intercultural dialogue experiences um, when they realized that other young people from around the world were actually just like them in terms of um, arguments for the arts. Yeah. That those young people would be the young people who would be costing the government money because they would be getting into trouble they would not be at work. They would be, uh, you know, causing antisocial behaviour. They would end up in the criminal justice system, whatever. But by giving those young people a really profound self uh, sense of their own self worth, and by giving them confidence, by uh, connecting them with those uh, with that wider community, they then become active uh, active agents of change. Um, and to the extent where they become business people, where they become civic leaders, where they become active volunteers. And this is an important economic argument that government after government have failed to understand. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a question for both of you, but maybe Julie, you could go first. Um, the UK and, and the Balkans are both experiencing the entrenched political and tribal divisions that seem to be um, such a moment in history in many European countries, let alone in America. Um, can you give us your opinion and perhaps some anecdotal evidence of how you feel divided communities can be brought together and he healed in this agonizing time of division? Well, um, sharing culture uh, is, is important. Um, so um, eating, you know, sharing each other's food, coming together in, in safe spaces. So in fact, the idea of citizens assemblies is perfect because that's about bringing people together with all their different views, um, with all their different learned behaviors, putting people into a space together where they agree to um, give the time and the space and the energy to listening. And respectful listening has to be part of the way forward. Amazing. It's very powerful. I know it's kind of a, um, yeah, um, all of that. Stephen, have you got anything you'd like to, to um, add to, to what Julie's just said? Well, just responding to that. Um, yes, I mean, it, going back to what you were saying about metaphor and symbol, I think there's a lot of science that we can now use and just say, well, look, this is the way things work. This isn't ideological. It's just these, these are the way dynamic systems work and we're part of a system and diversity and interconnectedness is just the way of the world. But we know that human beings work on feelings rather than being entirely rational. And they love stories more than they necessarily like a pile of facts. And I think that's where we come in, is that, yes, you have mechanisms like the assemblies, but I think you need to have people in the arts involved in it so that we help create the frameworks in which these things operate. Because one of the... Um, one of the things I always talk about with my work is that when people say, oh, Stephen, so what do you do as an artist? What do you paint or what do you make? Well, yes, I, yes, I am a sculptor. Yes, I do paint. But actually, I'm a relational artist. So what I'm doing is I'm making conceptual frameworks for you to play in. But the framework has a huge amount of space inside. And that's space for you to feel safe. Because it's being defined and by being a defined space, you know that when you enter it, you can then experiment. 
you can meet people you'd never met before you can be open because you don't have to go in there with agendas because you're not there to win an argument you're there to investigate things and i think that's the huge difference and i that's why i think the assembly is a brilliant idea but it needs to be done by the right people because just saying assembly doesn't work and just say just in the same way as saying oh democracy it's a great idea yeah but it's how you do it because you can use democracy as a weapon against people yeah. um, i mean i also i also think that it's it's a uh, it's trusting the, the 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 young people or in the case of an adult assembly to the the um the people in the in that so you're holding a space for people with mm -hmm. it to explore and, and ask questions. What I what I what I love about the idea of bringing artists in the building of the of the great imagining um, creatives are much mm -hmm. wider than just artists. Um, you know, creative educators, creative thinkers, um, is that 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 with children, young people, you know, if you make it playful and you make it fun and you make it exciting, they're more they're more engaged and they're more they're more curious and they're more um, up for stuff and and I think that that that, that sort of um, you know the, the thing with the traditional education is that it does it does to some extent start to kind of put you in these boxes of people who are going to be successful at their education in inverted commas and people who are not going to be successful at their education people who find it engaging and people who find it boring and people who um, feel that they're very good at these specific subjects and people who feel they're very good at these specific subjects and and to kind of open that up and and to to enable um, the the whole school to feel um, reinvigorated and re and re um, re animated in the learning is uh, is what I'm committed to. It's another thing that we forget as well because it's so normal for us that we we just forget to mention it, but we create spaces that allow that give people permission they give people permission to 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 think to question to fail and it be okay thank you so much both of you